Hello and welcome. This is L.A. Rathbone. Welcome to part two of the Slackware series. And this is uh, the first part of the series in which we're going to install Slackware. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I posted the first video, but I'm going to try a different setup now. I was having some synchronization issues with my Mac. I'm going to try to actually do this on Slackware now that I have a decent computer. So let's see if this works. So on the last occasion, what we did was we set up partitioning and uh, I made one minor adjustment to the setup. I increased the hard drive size a little bit overall, but I didn't make any other major changes. So I'm working with a bit of a bigger hard drive, virtual hard drive on the virtual box, but otherwise the setup should be the same. So once you've done your partitioning, the next step is to run the setup utility. So you, we run that, press enter, and we've got a number of options here. Uh, we're not going to read the help file because, uh, well, this is what you're here for. You're listening to me talk about how to do it, so don't worry about that one. Key map. I am using a U.S. keyboard, so I'm not going to bother with that. There we go. Here's an option we can use. Add swap. So you recall that we did set up a swap partition um, with FDisk, but you still have to activate it and set it up you know, with the setup utility. So hit enter here. And you'll note that uh, Slackware is actually smart enough to detect a swap space. And you'll recall that that was our dev SDA2 partition. Um, and that is the correct one. So I'm just going to hit enter here. And it's asking if I want to check for bad blocks. Um, I don't think that you need to do that in this day and age. So I'm going to say no. And so what it did was it activated the swap space right now during the installer. Um, and it added an entry into our FS tab, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but that is what it added. Don't worry about what that means right now. Now what they want to know is which partition do we want to use as our root partition. Now, don't pick the first one because that's going to be our boot partition. So leave that one alone and choose the, the big one, SDA3. Um, I've always found format, uh, the, the quick format, to be just fine. So I'm going to hit enter here. And it wants to know which file system I want to use. Now, I'm not going to get into some kind of debate about which one's the best one. Um, for most people, I would pick the default, ext4. Way back when, ext2 was the standard. And then about 10 years ago, ext3 started to become the one that was used. I know Red Hat 9. I think was the first release that used ext3 about 10 years ago, but ext4 has matured to the point that I think that it's perfectly usable for everyday use. Uh, the other ones, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really bother. I used to swear by riser fs, but I'm not going to use that one for reasons I won't get into right now. So I'm going to use ext4, hit enter, and it's formatting that. So just give it a bit of time there, and. Now it wants to know if I want to set up any other partitions. Um, and yes, I do. Uh, and I, I want to set up SDA1 as my slash boot partition. So I'm going to hit select there. I'm just going to format it. Um, it wants to know which file system I want, I want to use. Way back when, it was advised to use ext2 for your boot partition. Um, I don't really remember why that's the case. Uh, maybe because. It's just so supported by older versions of Linux. So if you wanted to have multiple kernels running on your boot partition accessed by multiple distributions, you could do that. Um, I'm not going to bother. I don't. I think that's kind of overkill for the purpose of this video. So I'm just going to choose ext4. It wants to know where I want to mount it. I'm not going to put it in user local where they're selecting there as an example. I want to mount it to boot. So I'll put forward slash boot and hit enter. And it'll go ahead and show us what's been added to our FS tab. We've got our root uh, partition and our boot partition. Now, the, you may be wondering what all these little entries mean. I guess I'll just go through them real quick. Obviously, the first entry um, in the line is the name of the device. The second entry um, is the mount point. So SDA3 gets mounted to forward slash, which is the root of the whole system. Um, the file system that we're using is ext4. You could probably put auto there, and it would probably auto detect it, but we know which file system it is, so you might as well just keep it the way Slackware did it. 
defaults. Um, I'm not going to get into what all those defaults are, but they are the default options for mounting a partition. It gets mounted uh, read-write, etc., with the usual permissions. The second last number um, is actually I forget I forget exactly what it is. It is um, well, I, I remember. I know what it is. Um, it, 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 it's a number that determines whether or not a certain backup tool is going to be used. I don't remember the name of that program. It's an ancient program, but Slackware doesn't even come with it. So I don't know why uh, they leave that as one. It would probably be better to leave it as zero, but it doesn't really do any harm since we don't even have the program to begin with. And the last number there talks about priorities in terms of running the file system check. Just leave those as is. It wants to know where we want to go ahead and install Slackware from. Well, we're installing it from the CD or DVD in this case. But go ahead and choose the one that applies to you. I'm going to hit Auto here. It's going to look for our disk, and I hope that it will find it. And yes, it did. All right, now they want to know which packages we'd like to install on our system. Now, I'm going to do a full install, and this is what's recommended by Patrick Volkerding as the best way of um, maintaining a Slackware system. Now, you may think, L.A. Rathbone, why are we installing everything? Isn't that overkill? Well, just because you install everything doesn't mean that you have to use it. And also, hard drive space is so cheap these days. I mean, you can get terabyte hard drives dirt cheap and everybody has a huge hard drive now so the amount of space taken up by all these programs relatively speaking is going to be minuscule if you're doing a minimalistic install you know you can go ahead and, and, and tailor that the way you want but I think that that kind of goes beyond the scope of this video so I'm going to leave it uh, leave everything except for KDE I which is international language support for KDE um, because I'm only going to bother with US English I wouldn't install all those anyway. That's the one exception to the full install. I, I would leave those, leave that blank, and then after you've finished your install, if you want to go ahead and install other languages, you can do that. But I'm going to leave it blank as the default. Often, I usually don't install Emacs on my install, but I'm just, I'm just going to leave it because why not? It's not particularly large in today's standards. So let's hit Enter and we want to do a full install um, don't don't ever choose newbie ever it takes forever because it asks you every single time if you want to install each package and that's really really stupid so let's hit enter for full and it's gonna go th go ahead and um, install a whole whack of packages here um, I'm just gonna put it on pause this video and meet you back here when it's all done all right we're back now um, the next question that they're asking us is whether we want to make a USB flash boot now they, they used to ask if you wanted to make a boot floppy but this is, this is a bit more of a new school way of doing it um, feel free to make one if you want to I'm just not gonna bother I'm gonna hit skip here and hit OK There we go. Now they want to know if we want to set up Lilo, which is the Linux loader, automatically, as the kids say these days, or using the simple, or using the expert method, um, or skip. Now we don't want to skip it because then we won't be able to load Slackware at all. So why don't we use the simple method, um, which usually works quite fine. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at the Lilo.conf uh, setup menu, or sorry, we'll look at the Lilo.conf file at some point later on. Now, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just um, use the standard here. What they want to know is, oh, I see. Yeah, they want they want to know if uh, Lilo should be loaded up uh, with a resolution or not. I'm just going to use standard, especially because I'm on a virtual machine. So Now they want to know um, if there's anything we want to append to um, the current
kernel parameters. What you should, what you should, what you should do here is leave this blank unless you know for a fact that you need some. So if your hardware needs special parameters for the kernel, put them in here. And otherwise, just hit Enter to continue. What they want to know is whether we want to use UTF-8 uh, on the console. It doesn't affect X11, um, namely the graphical interface, but it does affect the console when you're in console mode. Um, it's not well. It's not 1999 anymore, so I don't really agree with Slackware's choice here. I'm going to choose yes and use UTF-8. And if it turns out that there's issues doing that, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I think that yes is going to be fine here to use UTF-8 because that's the, that's the standard modern encoding. I definitely want to install Lilo to the master boot record. Now this dev mouse link isn't really necessary, but um, they're asking to do it. it. Doesn't hurt. Most people want to choose the IMPS2 here. They want to know if we want to load the GPM program at boot time. Um, I'm going to say yes. I think GPM is kind of a kind of a cute thing. Unless you use your mouse in the console mode, I'm going to say yes here, and we'll try to play around with that maybe a little bit later. Yes, we do want to configure the network. Now they want to know what our host name is going to be. Um, I'm just going to call it Slackware. And I'm going to call the domain local domain. Now I'm just going to use the old school DHCP method. Um, to set up a network. You could use Network Manager, um, but I'm going to do it the more old school way. I, I, I've never had to do this in my life. I'm going to hit enter here. And now they're just asking me if this is correct. I'm going to say yes. Okay, now they want to know what services we want to uh, run at boot. I think that we're hitting around the limitation time for uh, recordings here so I'm gonna stop here and meet you back in the next video and we'll go through we'll finish the installation process at that time this is Ellie Rathbone signing off have a good day